Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazda and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to the second part of my Integrate AVD and Azure Stack HCI little uh, mini topic series that I'm doing within my wider Azure Stack Hub series. So this is a penultimate episode, so I've got one more episode after this in the series. Um, it's, it's been The support has been amazing, by the way, so I just want to really thank everybody for their ongoing support with um with this whole the whole series uh the feedback i've been getting has been amazing people really enjoy this topic it's such a hot topic right now uh, but as i said we're t today so that the demos are over today is going to be after i've sort of spoken about the sort of theory that i want to cover um, a bit of a very very short episode today but i want to go straight into the the podcast interview that i did part one and i will obviously once just before that starts i'll tell you who that's with um keep trying to keep that suspense building um, so without further ado, let's get jumping into this episode. So this is part two of integrating AVD and the Zero Stack HCI. Um, like I said, it's going to be a short, a much shorter episode today. We're just going to talk about licensing and pricing, uh, and then we're going to go into the podcast interview, part one of that podcast interview. Um, so to run as your virtual desktop with Azure Stack HCI, you need to make sure you're licensed correctly, and, and we did touch on that in the last episode a little bit. You need to be aware of the pricing model as well. There are three components that affect how much it costs to run Azure Virtual Desktop within Azure Stack HCI. So use of access rights. So these are the same licenses that grant access to AVD on Azure. Uh, they also apply to AVD when Azure Stack HCI. You then have what's called a service fee. So there's two types of service fees. There's the Azure Stack HCI service fee, and then there's the Azure Virtual Desktop and Azure Stack HCI service fee. So the, the latter of those uh, is the fee that you require to pay for each active virtual CPU or vCPU for your ABD session host running on Azure Stack HCI. So again, just some aspects you need to be aware of that are priced a bit differently from a, from a pricing model compared to you know, ABD in, in Azure. Uh, so I said, really, really quick episode then, just wanted to touch on that. Uh, so although that says demo time, it's not actually demo time. We are actually going to go into, I thought it'd be a really nice way to finish off the, the series, having a, an interview sort of podcast. Um, so today's, so this series, I'm, I'm actually interviewing the amazing Lisa Clark, um, who's a Microsoft MVP and she, she, she's from, obviously works for Dell as well. And she works in this area of Azure Stack and she's got so much good content on this and she's got so knowledgeable and it's just such a fun interview. And I learned quite a bit from speaking to her as well. Um, so this is part one of my uh, interview with Lisa Clark on Azure Stack. Welcome back. So we're not in the demo tenant. And as I mentioned, I have a, have a special, very, very special guest who's going to join me for this two part podcast. So over the next couple of the last two episodes, I'm going to split the, the podcast at the end of both episodes. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce my, my special guest for today. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Hello. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. And you. So um, Lisa Clark for uh, Lisa at the Edge is uh is my special guest this podcast and i don't see as soon as i did this topic i thought i need lisa to do a, a session with me so i can i can uh, speak about this topic because um well I'll tell you what why don't you introduce yourself first lisa yeah cool so hey everyone my name is lisa clark i work as a pre-sales specialist at dell technologies focused on all things azure hybrid so azure stack hci azure arc azure stack hub and um, yeah anything to do with the azure a hybrid portfolio from a Dell's uh, kind of side of the, the playing field. That is what I get to do day in day, day in day out. <laughs> Sounds like a very, very good uh, technology to be aligned with. Um, and also I see in the background an MVP certificate. Yes, good, good point. I forgot about that. I'm also <laughs> uh, Microsoft MVP in the Azure hybrid area as well. Yes. I think in a way that's a, it's a good thing that we, we forget about it because then it doesn't it doesn't define you. Um, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't define you. It doesn't define me. But you are a Microsoft MVP, um, yeah. and you have been for about three three four years now. Yeah, I think it's about three years. Um, let's yeah. check how many I've got. Three little um, <laughs> bits on my on my award. So Just looking we'll, at mine, yep. we'll see if I get a fourth later this year. <laughs> no, no, all being all being well, you will. So. Thank you so much for joining me, Lisa. Obviously, I, I've spoken to you about this before, and I'm kind of I'm, well. We're at the end now of my Azure Stack um, series that I did, and what really motivated me to do it was the the integration with AVD, which we are going to get onto. Yeah. Um, but what what I think I'd like to understand first is so when did you first start working with Azure in that Azure Stack space? Yeah. So 
it was some time ago. You're making me feel old. Um, oh, sorry. It was around about the 2016-2017 timeframe. So actually I was working with a, for a managed service provider in Scotland and was actually working on creating a multi-tenanted environment based on Windows Server 2016. We we're actually the first uh, managed service provider at that time to kind of put it in in, the, in a multi-tenanted data center type scenario. Um, that's when I basically started to get involved with Microsoft technology. Um, and then it was, I think there was, yeah, it was Windows Azure Pack that um, got involved with, with Windows Server 2016. Wow. Then it was all over Azure Stack Hub. So I actually attended the Azure Stack Hub airlift in Seattle in 2017. And since then, I've kind of been hooked. <laughs> um, and it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster journey over the last, gosh, how many years would that be now? Four, five, six, seven, seven, seven years, eight years. Wow, um, but it's, it's a super interesting space. So yeah, I'm still here and I love it. I mean, I'll be honest, I've only had a couple of about a month of having to play with it and I, I couldn't agree anymore it's such a interesting topic and I've, I've not even scratched the surface in my videos if I'm honest um just the integration with 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 Azure and that hybrid element is just it just doesn't seem to have any limits um that brings me on to sort of my, my second thing I want to talk about yeah. so this, this this phrase hybrid <laughs> it's been a buzz. Yeah, it's been a buzzword for for a while. It's been around for a while as well, especially since cloud really became prominent. Um, and, and while people sometimes have sort of different interpretations of that word, yeah. So as a as a as as, as a obviously a, 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 what I deem as a specialist in this area, you are. Um, what do you believe that like, hybrid to be, and, and where do you feel as your stack fits into that that hybrid story? Yeah, so you're right, it's a buzzword, much like, well, it's become a buzzword, which is a little bit of a shame, um, because it's like multi-cloud is a buzzword. But this is this is how I define the two, and I think it's so important then when you're discussing these topics, is to come up with a, de a definition that both parties kind of understand. Because I have customers, partners, you know, even other colleagues that will use the term, but we might mean it, that, you know, mean slightly different things. So for me, multi-cloud is where a customer is using one or more of the public cloud vendors, is how I define it. So if they've got some Azure and they've got some AWS, um, maybe they're using some SaaS products, maybe they've got some on-prem cloud. And it's just really to describe that state of being so that they're, they're using multiple different clouds. Whereas hybrid, I think, means a little bit more. Um, and I used to use the phrase back in the day, uh, you know, Azure Stack Hub, um, I even used it with Azure Stack HCI, making hybrid dreams a reality, right? Because I define hybrid where you are, you've picked a platform, but you know that you cannot run all of your workloads in that platform for various reasons, right? It could be latency, data regulatory reasons, you've got super performant workloads and actually they're just super expensive up there or, you know, um, there's a whole multitude of reasons. But you want, so you need to run something at the edge or in your data center or in your office, et cetera. Hybrid is where you've, you've got this scenario and actually what you're trying to do is have consistency between those two. So it's something that's more designed and implemented to meet those requirements and it's more of a strategy. That is how, that is how I refer to hybrid. And I think that in that kind of description, that's where Azure Stack HCI and Azure Arc really kind of demonstrate what what that means right it's the consistency in terms of being able to govern manage and secure your workloads whether they're running in azure right in like uk south for instance um and potentially in your data center in i'm in dundee right so your data center in dundee and being able to use those uh, same azure management tools monitoring tools security tools like defender for cloud etc it's yeah, having those two different environments, but being able to bring consistency to the way you govern and manage them. That's kind of my, the way I view it. <laughs> I really I really like that word you keep on using, consistency. And I've never heard anyone actually re refer to that word in, in the, 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 you know, in their description of hybrid. And that's so interesting. So that, that consistency, and as you said with us, your stack, I'll say stack, because obviously there's hub, HCI, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to define between them yet. But... And that gives you the consistency because you're, you're, you have your Azure cloud, wherever it is, but then you have 
on your be it your data center or your on premises, you also have the same feature set, the same technology, but in your own environment, in your premises, in your in your. Yeah. So that's where the consistency comes. Um, and I've never thought and about it that way, if I'm honest. Consistency is a word that I honestly use day in and day out because that's really what it's all about. And also, that's the where that's the biggest area of interest I see from customers. Um, they're looking for that consistency between these two different environments. And actually, Microsoft at Ignite last November, did you hear the term adaptive cloud come out? I did. I did, yes. Yeah. So first off, I was a bit like, oh, dear, another marketing term. <laughs> right? I'll be honest. But after kind of learning more about it, speaking to the product management teams at Microsoft, etc., it's actually a nice turn in the phrasing because I think we've been very focused on public cloud, private cloud, edge, IoT, hybrid, and they are all effectively locations. They're they're not really, you know, we all say this cloud is a model, it's an operating system, it's not where you're running your virtual machine or your workload. And so this term adaptive kind of brings the focus back to that. So actually it doesn't matter where you are running your workloads. Azure's new kind of messaging is they are there to be that adaptive cloud so that yeah, you yeah. can use Azure services um, wherever you need to run your workloads, which ultimately give you that consistency. Yeah, and that, that's flexibility essentially, isn't it? Yeah. Microsoft saying we're, we're, we're flexible enough to know it's not just one place or one location. It's yeah. locations all around the world. It could be as your government, it could be as your China, you know, it could be US government. Um, and it could be on premises in a data center somewhere. So no, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know what you mean. <clears throat> when they do come out with these terms, it's supposed to, oh man, marketing sounds great, but what does it actually mean? And then we're, we're fortunate enough as MVPs to have some direct interaction. I'm sure with, with your role at Dell as well, you get quite a lot of interaction yeah. with, like I said, product teams, which is really good. Um, but yeah, I like that word consistency. Um, mm. See, my, 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 my interpretation of hybrid has always been very, Probably the most common, which is just like, you know, you've got some stuff on premises and you've got some stuff yep. and you use some sort of method to connect them, be it a VPN yep. or be it uh, identity or something like, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think I think it's evolved maybe when it first started that term. Yeah. Um, I think like that's said, the pieces of it. Definitely. But even when you say things <clears> like <throat> you use something to connect them, right, you use identity. What, mm. what does using the same identity in one environment with another environment provide? It's that consistency. Mm. So you're not chopping and changing. And so I think it's just about bringing more and more towards that, um, not having to jump between different tools and uh, yeah. logons and, and, and portals. And it's, and... Not just, it's, it's not just a consistency in technology, it's a consistency in policy and, and process yeah. as well. 100%. I give an example. If you're using, I'll use a technology for example. If you're using maybe VMware on premises, mm -hmm. but using Azure in, in the cloud, and all you've got yeah. a VPN connected with them, technically you class that as hybrid. But where's the consistency in policy process? You've got totally yeah. different things to follow on premises, but then in the cloud with Azure, it's very different as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, very very interesting. I like that term consistency. I'm just, I'm I'm nicking that. Feel it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you've not you've not copyrighted it yet, have you? No. <laughs> I suggest I suggest you do. I suggest you do. <laughs> and that concludes the first part of this uh, Q&A podcast with Lisa Clark. Make sure you tune into the final episode. Um, Lisa's going to be putting the curtain down on this series. Um, and so we should be we've got some really good questions coming up. So again, Lisa, thanks for joining me for part one. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, and until the final episode, until next time, goodbye.